apple pie moonshine. It's that time of year. I'm so tired I can hardly drive. Well, welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. Yes, the channel that dares to unlock all the mysteries of home distilling. We're here today, and we're going to make some apple pie moonshine. Now, apple pie moonshine is a staple of the United States. Uh, we know it's known throughout the world, but it's kind of heritage, and its origination is deep in the woods. Um, and many, many people, many, many cultures and throughout the United States want to claim its originality. Doesn't really matter. We know how to make that. Okay, so here it goes. Um, apple pie moonshine is a mixture. Um, and it tends to lend itself to the season being autumn, the Thanksgiving, Christmas season, because it makes great gifts. You know, they ought to have a label on the outside, you know, that FDA warning label. You know, it has a tendency to cause you to lose control of the English language. Ooh, makes you suave and sexy all at one time. Uh, drink in excess could cause premature sleep. Uh, it should have all those warnings. Well, I would just say be cautious, beware. It's really good, and it does have a lot of effects. Shit. Well, welcome back to Barley and Hops. Yep, I'm George, the channel that dares to unlock the mysteries of home distilling. We say that all the time. If you haven't had an opportunity yet, please subscribe, share us with your friends, and of course, comment below. Now, we're here today uh, to make an apple pie moonshine. Uh, first of all, you have to start off with moonshine. Uh, that's that's a given, okay? So you're not going to just create apple pie moonshine. Uh, you've got to start off with a product. Uh, I recommend, and we'll get to it, but I recommend the highest proof that you could produce. Uh, and there's a reason for that. But we'll get to it, okay? It's not it it's critical. It's not critical, but it's important. Um, now, an apple pie moonshine is really a mixture, a concoction that has developed over generations. And many different generations claim the original, the originality of uh, apple pie moonshine, but we know that it's universal throughout the United States and well known throughout the world, of course. Now, you have really two basic styles. Um, there are many, many different offshoots, but two basic styles. There would be the clear and then it would be the murky. Um, and the difference between the two is the base product of being the apple cider. Wow, before we even do that, let's just get down to the ingredients. Now, this is my recipe that I've made several different times, and I tend, I like it. It's mine, just like you will enjoy yours however you make it. Now, there are several different ways to do this. To me, this is a little bit more in-depth, I think, but uh, this is a basic recipe that we use here in the backwoods of the shop. Ha! Now, fair warning, this stuff should, once you get it mixed and you do, do, and you do offer it to someone, it, it should come with that, you know, that FDA warning label uh, that they have on like medication and stuff like that, that a couple of drinks of this could potentially cause you to lose control of the English language. It has that tendency. Or to make you suave and sexy all at the same time. You never really know. Um, here we have, we have apple cider. Uh, I've got another jar of apple cider. And I'll show you the differences of those. And we got some apple juice. I've got clove, whole clove, some brown sugar, some white sugar, and of course some star anise. And then last but not least, we know cinnamon sticks. Now, the, the basic premise for an apple pie moonshine kind of lends itself to the fall season into the Thanksgiving, Christmas holidays, and that type of environment, or that type of period, uh, that because it is really, really a good drink, could be drank warm or cold. I tend to like it cold, um, but some do like it warm, uh, and that's quite all right. Now, uh, they make great Christmas gifts, oh, by the way. Um, the difference between uh, apple cider and apple juice, to start with, okay? An, an apple cider is made by washed, crushed apples 
that are placed together into like a big bag and then squeezed and then all the juice comes out and that's known as the apple cider. All right, whereas an apple juice is a product of the apples that has been filtered and pasteurized and that's why it comes out a whole lot cleaner. All right, uh, your apple ciders have more of the tartish apple flavor and it's really hard to describe flavors uh, but you'll find that an apple cider will have just a little bit more of that tweaking tartiness of an apple, but a full body of flavor, as opposed to an apple juice, which just has the whole body of flavor of an apple. And a lot of times, minus that little bit of tartness that you kind of look forward to in a cider. Okay? Now, your mixture ratios can be totally up to you. Uh, I, w I have a recommendation, and it's normally about 50-50, uh, but I normally go a little bit higher on the apple cider than I do the juice because I'm more of a fan of the little bit of tartiness. Now, we also have a clearer apple cider, which has also been primary. It's filtered, so none of the pulp is available. So you have those two different styles. You'll have the clear, and you have the murky. Whichever one you make is going to be perfectly okay, all right? I tend to make both of them because I know of different people who have different desires. It, it's just that simple. Okay, um, in order to get this thing started, what I'm going to do, you're going to need a heat source. You're going to need some sort of a whisk to do some mixing, uh, and you're going to need some pots, all right? Uh, so I've got two pots here, and I've got my new wave cooktop. You know that I use this on a regular basis. I've done a lot of different things out here in the shop. This really comes in handy. This is a, um, a magnetic, it's an induction cooker. Okay, so it only works with a magnetic pot. It, you know, an iron skillet uh, or, or a pot that has been designed uh, with a magnetic base. How do we know it's got a magnetic base? Well, I use a magnet uh, so if you go down to the store to get one of these, make sure you get one that when you turn the up on the bottom, a, a magnet sticks to it. If a magnet sticks to it, then it's going to work on this cooktop. As opposed to this one I have, which looks ex exactly the same, only different. It's not magnetic. Oh, So what you'll have is, and I want to show you this real quick because this, this has come up a couple of times and people have asked the question, well, what happens if I have a pot that's not magnetic and I've got an induction cooktop? Can I still use that? Well, the answer to that is uh, yes. Uh, not the most optimal way of doing it, but yes, this will work. And that is find a small piece of mild steel that's also magnetic. And I did. I cut a circle out of this. And you place that on top of your magnetic cooktop. And then you place your pot on top of that. That will work. Here's a demonstration. If I turn on, there, you notice it doesn't make any noise. You won't hear anything because it won't come on unless there's something magnetic on it. Nothing. It won't do anything. And if I try to start it, it says E1. It's an error. There's an error code. It doesn't have anything magnetic on it. But if I place this You, there, you hear it? It comes on automatically as soon as I place something that's magnetic and that's hot already. Yes, that quick. So if you place something magnetic on there, it'll automatically get hot. I also use a pizza pan. This pizza pan is also magnetic. I cut some holes in it. Place that on there and then place your pot on top of it. Now, what happens to uh, this spacer that you place in here, well, it, as it gets hot, it starts to torque and bend, you know, bend and twist. I cut holes to try to reduce that, but if you've got enough weight in here with liquid, it'll hold that down, so you've got a, a constant contact. So the efficiency of the heat transfer may not be 100%, but it should get you through that rough spell. Now, aside from that, I've got this one, which works extremely well all right so here we go <laughs> the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our i'll tell you what i'll do i'm going to add the juices and we'll be right back okay i now i've added i've added all two quarts of my apple cider itself and i've added about a quart and a half of the apple juice and the reason for that is 
I like, I'm, I'm more on the apple cider side of the flavor profile as opposed to the apple juice, but that's totally up to you. Uh, the next thing I'm going to add is two cups of brown sugar. And the two cups of brown sugar go right into the mixture, and I've got, the, I've got this thing turned on already. And I've already got a pre-measured one cup of white sugar. Now, could I have used three pounds of, or three cups of brown sugar? Absolutely, I could have. Uh, what, what I want is I want that, this is just my recipe, okay? <laughs> so I use one cup of white sugar. And white sugar is sort of like a more clean sugar profile as opposed to the brown sugar. Oh. Then we give that a mix. And what we're going to do is we're going to heat this up to almost a boil, just short of a boil, and we're going to allow that to simmer for an hour. Um, and the reason we're going to allow that to simmer for an hour because what we're trying to do there is we want to extract as much of the flavors as we can from... Da, 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 da. Yes. Oh, there we go. Now I'm going to drop in clove. Okay, these are whole cloves. There's two. There's four. Six. Eight. There. Ten cloves. Now, the clove, the profile, the flavor profile of a clove is a little bit more astringent and sweet. There's a sweetness to them, but they'll kind of give you that mouthfeel that kind of give you that little bit of a numbing. Uh, in your mouth, but very, very slight. You don't want to overdo that. Um, I will drop in two star anise. Now, what does a star, the, the flavor profile of a star anise is close to a licorice. Um, now, if you really, really like the licorice flavor, you can add more, but I'd be cautious because they are very powerful, and uh, two of these are, are, are plenty uh, because I don't want that licorice flavor to overpower anything else. I just kind of want it there hidden in the background. Uh, and then last but not least, we're going to add one and come out of there use two. I'm going to add five of these. Three, four, five liquor sticks. Um, cinnamon sticks. Um, now, at the, at the end of this process, when you uh, taste it, because what you're going to do is you're going to taste it for flavor, for its flavor profile, you can add more cinnamon or you can add more juice to lighten it up just a little bit, but we want to get a really concentrated uh, apple, uh, cinnamon, star anise, and clove flavor uh, in order to mix into our spirit. Back shortly. Well, you can see this. Oh, this is. See, so just give it a stir every now and then. What we're trying to do is make sure all those sugars liquefy, but you'll see my cinnamon sticks floating. There's or some star anise. Uh, you'll see a couple of the cloves floating around, but this gives off an aroma. The wife loves it when I make this because it just makes the whole house smell, oh, festive. Uh, it really, really has a nice aroma. So we're going to bring that to just about a boil, and we're going to allow that to sit and simmer for an hour. Well, you see here, I've got it set to 215. Um, and 215 is just slightly above the boiling point for water. But remember, we added sugar. And what does sugar do to water? It increases the boiling point. So uh, I've just got this really minor simmering action going on. You don't want to overboil it, because uh, it will boil over. Uh, so keep it here for oh, an hour. So we're going to allow that to continue to simmer, uh, and we'll be right back. Now, while we're waiting for that to mature and do its thing, it smells wonderful in here. The aroma is just so pleasant. Uh, oh, I, I've got just something to show you here. And here, this is, we go back to that. I said use the highest level of alcohol you possibly can or that you have that's clean. Um, and I'm going to use, what I have is I have a, a, a quart of 96% alcohol. And that is actually 192 proof. Now, according to the app, 
the, you know, we, you can get the app. It, I'll, I'll drop it into the link, uh, into the description tab. Uh, but you can, it'll, you'll download it directly to your phone. Um, if I use the app, the app tells me that what I need in order to drop this down to an 80 proof apple pie moonshine, that I'll need 0.42 quarts of moonshine at 192 proof. And then 0.58, that's 0.42, and then 0.58 of my apple pie mixture all right and that'll give me a blend and bring it down to 80 proof now the, here's what's important about that let's say for instance remember as the proof drops as your proof drops then you're going to use less of your mixture cool let's say for instance you have 150 proof or 75% alcohol. Uh, now, in this case, it, it actually almost reverses itself because now you need, what, like 0 0.52, 0 0.52 um, quarts of moonshine, right, and 0.48 quarts of your mixture. So what you have now is you have, you're, you're diluting the mixture itself and it's not going to be as strong um, or as noticeable as it would be if you're using a higher proof. And of course, this, even, this gets even worse, of course. Um, and if you do 120 proof, well then, your result here now is almost 0.75 of your spirit and about 0.25, about a quarter quart of uh, your your actual mixture itself so you can see how that gets progressively worse and worse as you go down the line and your proof drops that is the initial proof and all of these are in order to achieve 80 proof now what can you do you can do a couple of different things okay you can either rerun your distillate and try to get a pure more pure distillate at a higher proof okay that's one thing you can do um, and the other thing you can do is you can drop the proof of your final product just a little bit. Say for instance, okay, let's say for instance we want to drop this to 70 proof. And if we drop that to 70 proof, we, of course we don't have a, as strong of a mixture, but it's a little bit more sociable. Okay, and remember, we don't drink apple pie moonshine to get drunk. Uh, it's supposed to be a social event. Oh, so something that's it's pleasing. You can, you follow me? And if we do that, then this actually drops to 0.36 quarts. And then this goes up to 0.64 quarts. So, now our line is drawn here, which in essence means that you're going to have a more flavorful a lot more flavorful flavorful apple pie taste uh, and just a little bit less alcohol and you've only sacrificed 10 proof points I would submit to you a couple of 70 proofs uh, and a couple of 80 proofs it's kind of hard to tell the difference once you lost control of the English language you follow let's get back to mixing this well, we are finished. Yep. Oh, by the way, I left the writing on the... If, if that is new to you, you need to back up the video and try to figure out kind of what that was all about. Um, I've got three quarts here that I've made up of my apple pie moonshine ready for gifting. Uh, you can notice that uh, this one here, i got to add a little bit more to it because I was tasting. Um, oh, what a... What a what, <laughs> See, there you go. Yeah, like I said, you start to lose control of the English language. Um, we are finished with this. This is my murky, and this is the one that I used with the, of course, the apple cider that was uh, cloudy, uh, which was less pasteurized, less filtered. I've got a new batch here that I'm getting ready to make, so I'll be able to make at least three more of these. Um, and in addition, uh, I've got some leftover mix here, so all I've got to do now is run my still 
and I've got a really good potent mixture for my next apple pie moonshine gifting project. Yes, the season is upon us and we are about to send this out to some close friends and relatives. So, um, remember we use apple cider, apple juice, uh, star anise, clove, cinnamon stick, and then of course we use some brown sugar and some white sugar. And if you go back through the video, you'll see the proportions of that. Now, each and every one of those uh, are adjustable. It's totally up to you. So um, if you would, just make your own. And um, should you decide that you want a little bit more of one thing as opposed to another, uh, you can always adjust the mixture yourself. But uh, this is how we make the apple pie moonshine. You gotta love it. Happy distilling.